Sunrise Daily, we're continuing our conversation with Professor Oyebodi. Uh, you know, you're the expert in this field, and there, there are those who look at... We tried to ask uh, Mr. Sheu how long was that conversation for, but uh, he, he wasn't there, so he couldn't give us that much detail. Does it matter if he speaks to other world leaders, maybe, say, for a longer length of time, and then speaks, chooses to speak to two African leaders, maybe under, could it be an hour or 30 minutes? No, I don't think it's important that to focus on the duration. The fact that he called the president of Nigeria, I think is remarkable. I mean, he's spoken to Putin, he's spoken to uh, Theresa May, uh, he's spoken to the Australian, spoken. So uh, it was something that, as I said, was expected, yet it was unexpected. Um, so uh, don't let's focus on how long the conversation took but to uh, look at what uh, came out of the discussion. Uh, we, under Obama, uh, some of us were peeved that Obama could come to Africa twice and uh, he ignored Nigeria, uh, which was uh, a faux pas, if you ask me. And the acquisition of uh, weapons to prosecute the uh, war in the uh, Northeast uh, was a little bit uh, hampered during the Obama administration. I know we wanted to purchase Chinook helicopters. Uh, we didn't even want Apache helicopters, but we wanted some muscle uh, which the Americans could not deliver because of the League uh, Act. And Nigeria had to run to the Russians. Uh, the Russians obliged. But I'm saying that now that uh, Donald Trump is in the White House, he's a businessman. And the Nigerian economy is far too attractive to be ignored. We say we are the largest economy in Africa, mm -hmm. despite what we all know. <laughs> but uh, it's a market that uh, should be made uh, uh, complementary to the interests of Uncle Sam. And uh, you have a businessman in the White House. Uh, he's going to cut the losses of America. Obama was a disappointment, if you ask me, in terms of Africa, in terms of Nigeria. Uh, a trip to Africa without Nigeria is a wasted trip. So you think this is going to change now with Trump? Evidently, because Trump has not only invited uh, President Buhari to the White House, it's not the first time he's going to the White House, but he has given indications that they are going to turn the bend in terms of Nigeria and American relations. That's why I say it was a paradox. One did not expect this coming from Donald J. Trump. But lo and behold, uh, there's a new vice star. You're excited about this so much, and why do you think your excitement exceeds um, uh, understanding? No, no, no. What I'm, one time, it's not a question of being overexcited. Uh, it's remarkable, that's the language I used, that uh, Nigeria was not missing in action. You know, if the American president has been talking to the Brits, uh, the Russians, the Chinese, and even his next door neighbor, uh, Trudeau, and he thinks, now it's time to talk to Nigeria. I think we should applaud uh, the dexterity of Donald Trump. Yeah. It's like we used to say, can anything good come out of that loose cannon? But he has surprised all of us. Hmm. He definitely is getting good advice from yeah. certain quarters that in, in the African setting, you need to talk to Nigeria. But well, he's going to place America first in all of his dealings with every other country he has spoken to, every other uh, world leader he has spoken to. He told that to uh, uh, Theresa May. And uh, he's at every point reiterated that America comes first. So you have said that he's a businessman. Could it be the business interest only? Nigeria buy our weapons? Not just buying uh, their weapons. They want to buy oil. Uh, you know, he's talking to uh, Trudeau because of the uh, pipeline that they want to link uh, between Canada and the United States. Uh, shale oil is not that big anymore. Uh, we were number three in the supply of oil to America. We lost out. The Saudis came up, and uh, Obama wanted to cut back on oil imports. Now you find somebody who says uh, he can do business with Nigeria. Uh, it's economic. Every country puts its own interest first. You now see how you strike uh, a bargain. Uh, between uh, your interests and other interests. So a lot is going to be dependent on us in terms of what do we bring forward. Damn right. I think uh, we have our work cut out for us. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs should have, I believe by now, uh, a small think tank 
to prepare for the impending trip, to do their homework, so that you don't go to the White House empty-handed. Indeed, uh, I was going to ask you about the, the Agoa Treaty and this conversation, how the two of them will tie in when Tim Lane came up with what Nigeria would need to bring to the table. So well, what should we be, indeed, if we can possibly specify the areas we should be looking at so that we're out there, when that trip happens, we're out there prepared and good to go. No, no, the problem with Agoa, the Act, uh, African Growth and Opportunities Act, is that we have an economy that is in recession. Uh, we say we're going to get out of it, but people say we might actually sink into a depression. So if you can't produce the goods that could penetrate the American market, Agoa might not be that relevant. And my reading is that the Americans and the West generally, they are putting greater stock in Kenya and even Rwanda, uh, East Africa generally, uh, because they think East Africa is a better proposition. They don't have Boko Haram. I know, I know of course, the Somali uh, is there. Uh, but I'm saying that uh, U.S. investment wants very good returns. The returns in Nigeria are still attractive, but they are still uh, imponderables, Concept. like power. Mm. It's ridiculous that we, uh, in the University of Lagos, we, we've not had power for quite a while. Our two generators have nearly broken down. So that's a university that consumes a lot of power. Uh, I hear the Minister uh, of Power was talking about some 6,000. Yeah. Where, where is the 6,000? Okay. South Africa that has 44,000. Omega was still saying in, not enough. We have not hit 10,000 for a country of let's say 100 million people. So we have to get our act together locally so that our industrial base is enhanced. Take something like cotton, textile. Many of the textile companies have gone blunkers. So we have to put our money where our mouth is, enhance our productive capacity so that the goods that are available to the Americans, we can export. I'll, I'll tell you something. Uh, I, at our last convocation in the university, I wore my university tie. I don't think I was just fiddling with it, and I looked at it, made in China. That's the Harvard tie, made in China. You get my point? So the, the Chinese have penetrated the American market, as you all know. The suits, the phones, everything you are talking about comes from China. The Americans owe China $3 trillion, and that's why Donald Trump had to change uh -huh. his language. He wanted to tweet the tale of the dragon, but see what he's been saying, one China policy, blah, blah, blah. So nothing is given in terms of in America's interest. I'm, I'm definitely Donald Trump, uh, as I said, is getting some good advice. Forget the domestic politics in terms of uh, illegal aliens and what have you. But I go out that you mentioned, we have to enhance our productive capacity in order to take advantage of our goal.